Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're back with another common issue faced by the beekeepers and that's controlling the mites. If you're facing such a problem then keep watching as we're going to discuss all the possible ways to control mites. So without further ado, let's begin. Let's start by introducing our intriguing subject, the Varroa mites. These tiny reddish-brown parasites attach themselves to honeybees and feed on their hemolymph, weakening the bees' immunity and spreading diseases that can lead to hive collapse. These mites go unnoticed as they enter hives during summer, often hitching rides on drones, which unwittingly spread from bee to bee and colony to colony. Now here's where it gets interesting. During the summer months, your honeybees unknowingly let Varroa mites sneak into the hive, and guess who's the main chauffeur? The drones. As drones visit other hives, these mites catch a ride and move from bee to bee and hive to hive, spreading their unwelcome presence. But wait, the real trouble begins when the Varroa mite population skyrockets, usually around August. We've got all the methods you need to know to detect and control these pesky invaders. Step 1. Regular Hive Observation and Identification Imagine you're a detective on the lookout for clues. Beekeepers should inspect their hives at least four times a year, especially when the bee population's booming in the spring. Keep an eagle eye out for bees with deformed wings, a clear sign of Varroa mite infestation. You know, keeping an eye on those Varroa mites and bee colonies is a big deal. It helps us figure out if we need to take action and what kind of action to take. Beekeepers usually measure the average number of mites, like how many mites there are in every 100 bees, on a regular basis, often every month. This helps us know when the mite population of the adult worker bees goes over a certain limit. And there are a few ways we can do this, like sugar rolls, alcohol washes, or using a sticky board. Now, let's have a look at three different types of approaches. The first one is the cultural approach. The second we have is the mechanical approach, and the third one is the chemical approach. Let's talk about the cultural approach first. Cultural approaches focus on disrupting the mites' reproductive plans. It's like giving them less room to maneuver and reproduce. Resistant stock. The first method that comes under the cultural approach is resistant stock. These bees are like the frontline soldiers in your battle against the mites. By introducing these special bees into your apiary, you're reducing the dependence on chemicals for mite control. Some bee stocks have developed remarkable traits to resist mite infestations. Russian bees, for instance, have mastered the art of slowing down mite population growth through the suppression of mite reproduction. These bees exhibit lower rates of brood infestation and fewer multiply infested cells. What's more, they're even equipped to minimize viral replication in bees plagued by the deformed wing virus. Varroa-sensitive hygiene, or VSH bees, are another ace up your sleeve. They can identify mite-infested pupae and promptly remove them, maintaining the hive's hygiene. And then there are the ankle biters or leg chewers, bees that have a clever habit of biting the mites, rendering them helpless. These traits, each a product of nature's innovation, combine to fortify your colony's defenses against mites. Small Cell Comb The next message is small cell combs. Think about it. When bees build comb in the wild, the cell size tends to be smaller. Research has shown that as cell size decreases, mite numbers dwindle. This is because a shorter post-capping period in smaller cells translates into fewer mites being produced in each cell. Enter the concept of small cell comb. By using this natural blueprint for comb construction, you're essentially offering bees a tool to regulate mite populations. The beauty of this method lies in its simplicity. It doesn't harm the bees in any way. Brood Break And the last method is brood break. This refers to giving your bee colony a well-deserved break, a brood break to be exact. This technique involves temporarily ceasing the production of a new brood. The result? A significant disruption in the mite's reproductive cycle. How does it work? You can either cage the queen or remove her from the colony for about three weeks. During this time, all existing broods will hatch and mites will be forced out of their sealed cells and onto adult bees. 
This naturally orchestrated break in the brood cycle creates a hurdle for the mites and gives your colony a fresh start with a young queen for the winter months. Mechanical Approaches Now, let's move to the mechanical approach. Mechanical approaches involve manipulating the colony or hive itself to maintain mite control. Mite Trapping The first technique that comes under the mechanical approach is mite trapping. Imagine using drones as unwitting bait in a mite-catching operation. That's the essence of drone brood removal, a clever mite trapping technique. Varroa mites prefer drone broods for reproduction, making them more vulnerable to capture. By introducing drone comb, you're essentially providing a mite-friendly zone. However, here's the twist. Before the drone brood hatches, you remove it. This effectively eliminates mite reproduction within these cells, curbing their population growth. Screen Bottom Board The second method is Screen Bottom Board. Imagine mites dropping off of bees and finding it difficult to crawl back up. That's where the Screen Bottom Board comes into play. Unlike a solid wood bottom board, the screen version allows mites to fall onto the ground where they struggle to reattach to bees. This reduction in mite invasion into brood cells translates into a lower percentage of mites reproducing. In essence, it's a one-way ticket for the mites on their descent. Powdered Sugar And the third method is using powdered sugar. Who knew that powdered sugar could be a mite control tool? By sprinkling powdered sugar on bees, you encourage their grooming behavior. This leads to the dislodging of mites. It's as if the bees are giving themselves a detox session. While powdered sugar isn't a standalone solution, when combined with a screen bottom board, it can enhance mite drop and contribute to control efforts. Chemical Approaches Now, when all else fails, it's time to bring out the big guns. Chemical Approaches These involve using specific compounds to control mite populations, but they should always be a last resort. Soft chemicals One way is using soft chemicals. Soft chemicals are like nature's graceful solution to mite control. Derived from organic sources, these compounds don't leave any undesirable residues in high products. Organic acids, essential oils, and hot beta acids fall into this category. Formic acid One of the popular soft acid is formic acid. It's naturally present in bee venom and honey and can effectively kill mites by penetrating wax cappings. However, it's temperature dependent and requires careful consideration based on conditions. Oxalic acid Another one easily available is oxalic acid. Derived from plants like rhubarb and kale, oxalic acid can be used in vapor and dribble forms. It's most effective during broodless periods, making it a valuable addition to integrated mite control programs. Thymol Thymol, extracted from thyme plants, is a powerful contender in the realm of soft chemicals. While effective on adult bees, it doesn't penetrate cell cappings, limiting its impact on mites and brood cells. Hot Beta Acids You can also use hot beta acids. Derived from hot plants, these acids are safe to use year-round. Although they don't penetrate cell cappings, they still have a considerable impact, particularly during broodless periods. Hard chemicals If soft chemicals don't work, you can opt for hard chemicals. Synthetic acaricides are potent chemicals that can effectively kill mites. However, they should be employed only as a last resort due to potential harm to bees and hive products. Amitraz Amitraz is a widely used synthetic acaricide that demands careful monitoring due to mites developing resistance. Its usage requires thoughtful consideration. See, there's a whole range of practices we can use, from cultural stuff to chemicals. Here's the cool part. We can use what's called an integrated pest management approach. That's just a fancy way of saying we mix it up. We combine or rotate various mite control methods throughout the year. By doing this, we're not putting all our eggs in one basket. Using a mix of methods is not only more effective, but also lowers the chances of those mites getting resistant to chemicals. It's like having a bunch of backup plans to keep our bee colonies healthy and happy. Now, if we're talking about accuracy, alcohol washes take the crown. For places with a bunch of colonies, checking about 20% of them gives us a good picture of the mite situation. 
Now, when it comes to deciding what action to take, there's something called economic or action thresholds. These vary, but the goal is to make sure the mite levels stay below around 2 mites per 100 bees. Yeah, that's a pretty low number, but we can manage it with different techniques. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with a fellow beekeeper or anyone interested in the fascinating world of bees. And if you're hungry for more knowledge, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a buzzworthy update.